Previously on this channel, we've covered the gravity drive, which is a method of using a gravity generator and a mass block to create extreme propulsion at very little cost. Now, despite the fact this interaction is very weird, it is actually an intended function of both blocks. However, what we're covering today isn't intended in any way in the slightest. The Clang drive is the collective term for many different unconventional propulsion methods in Space Engineers that basically breaks the physics of the game in order to propel your ship at insane speeds. Now, because of this, there are many different models of the Clang drive, but in this video, I'm going to show two different models of the Clang drive that are, in my opinion, the easiest to build. Now, the first model of the Clang drive I'm going to show you is the hangar door drive, named as such as it uses a hangar door to achieve the propulsion. So in order to build the basics of it, you need some sort of power source, a rotor, and then a hangar door on the end. Now, if you go into the settings of the rotor, you need to turn on share inertia tensor and enable rotor lock so it doesn't rotate. From there, you need to build a frame. I'm not sure if it needs to be symmetrical, but it puts my mind at rest when it is. As when we were building the gravity drives, they needed to be symmetrical in order for the physics to behave properly. Physics doesn't really behave properly on these, but you'll see that in a minute. I've actually realized I placed the hanger the wrong way around. It actually needs to be this way around. You then need to place these blocks in front of the hangar door, which is why the door needed to be this orientation, so it can push against the three blocks in the middle when it opens. Now this is effectively done, however you might notice on the original version of this I placed lots of gyroscopes, and I'll show you why. If I go in the cockpit and set the hangar door to open and close on one on my hotbar, do a cheeky quick save, and I've opened my hangar door very slowly, you'll see in a second that when this happens we're going to have a nice spinning effect. So you can see we're veering off and we're spinning around. And while spinning is a good trick, this is obviously not what we want. So in order to maintain stability on this clang drive, and the other clang drive we'll show later in the video, we need to have some gyroscopes on it. Again, to keep everything balanced, I like to have the gyroscopes the same distance away from each other, just so everything is evenly distributed. And again, you don't necessarily need four, but I like to have it evenly distributed. And having four will make it more stable when flying forward. So what we want to do now is go to your gyroscopes. I'd recommend you add something to indicate that what these ones are doing. So I'm adding OR to all of these to indicate that they're for override. And then at the bottom, you've got override controls. Just turn that on, leave the settings at default. And then if we get back into our cockpit, quick save again. And now if I activate my clang drive, you'll see that we're now actually flying in a straight line and we're not moving around. That's because the gyroscopes are on override and that means they're trying to maintain a straight course for us. Now, obviously, because they're on override, they're not giving any steering potential. So we need to place more gyroscopes on the grid in order to allow us to steer. So here's the final model I came up with. Now, because we have four gyroscopes holding us in position, I added six gyroscopes onto the grid in order to give us enough turning force. So if I get into the cockpit now and wiggle my mouse, you'll see that whilst I can turn, it's a little bit rigid because the other gyroscopes are trying to keep us in place. But at least we do have the power to turn. You can also see that this is a much more compressed model. Using half blocks, I managed to compress it into a much smaller space. I like how mechanical this clang drive is because the way it pushes forward, it feels like it's actually part of the spaceship. And you can see there, if we zoom in, it's doing what all you guys should be doing and pushing that like button. So I'm going to time how long this takes to reach 100 meters per second. But let me tell you, it is very fast. Is it gravity drive speed? I'm not necessarily sure, but maybe that's something we can test later. Now you will see there's a slight sway on this, even with the gyroscopes. So I probably need a few more to keep me straight, but it's definitely close enough. And with the other gyroscopes, I am able to pretty much turn in all directions. So not only are you very fast, able to reach 100 meters per second very quickly, but you can also turn using this as an actual ship. Now, one of the advantages of the clang drive compared to the gravity drive is that the clang drive does not work within gravity. So the power of the gravity generator is decreased by the amount of gravity there is. With there being 100% gravity, the gravity generator outputs zero gravity. However, this works in any environment, no matter the amount of gravity it has. Now, it doesn't have to end here. You can place more hangar doors and more blocks in front of them to get even more speed from this. So in theory, if you had a massive ship, you could have a massive number of hangar doors propelling you forward. Now, the second model of Clang Drive I'm going to be showing is a little bit more complicated. However, it uses a very similar concept, so it's definitely worth checking out. You can see that this one uses a piston, a pillar block, and a door in order to achieve what it does. So let me show you how to build it. So once again, you need a power source, and you place your door here, and make sure that it's orientated so the bottom of it is facing towards where your piston will be. You place seven blocks along the bottom, and then again, just for symmetry, I'm going to place seven across the top. Place a block at the end here, then place your piston on it, and then place your pillar on the piston. Now, it's very important at this part that you edit your piston settings and set the maximum distance to 2.5. As whilst you can let it go all the way, this makes this version of the clang drive more erratic. And secondly, your piston is constantly trying to push the pillar into the other block, whereas at 2.5 meters, it's just going into the block. And that can have some explosive results. Once again, we need a cockpit. And to balance out our gyros like before, I'm going to place extra blocks on the side. And once again, make sure your gyros are facing forward and place however many you need to stabilize this on the grid. Make sure you go to them, rename them all, and then enable override on them. 
So just to check this is working, I'm going to get in the cockpit, go to my hotbar, add reverse to it, quick save, and then press one. And you should see the piston extending just like before, slowly pushing forward to push the subscribe button, wink. And there you go, we're off. So here's my final version. The only difference is being that I've got gyroscopes on it to maneuver. The batteries are in a different place. I don't really think that makes any difference. And then I've got a landing gear on the back. As I said, you can take off from planets with this. So once again, I'm gonna time how long it takes to get to 100 meters a second. I should also mention one other thing is that the piston extends much faster on this version. It doesn't make any difference how fast the piston extends and retracts as far as I can tell. So I just have this one going at max. Now I will say this model definitely feels slower than the other model, but it still achieves the same effect. Using the power of Clang, we can propel our ship forward extremely quickly and much faster than we would with a thruster. And once again, we can use the Clang drive on planets, whereas the gravity drive would not work at all on the Earth-like planet because the gravity is too high. And I was gonna say this feels slower, but it legitimately can't be because it's 100 meters a second and that's the cap. Man, I really need to lay off the speed mods. So I keep comparing the Clang drive to the gravity drive. So let's find out which of these is actually better. So we're going to do a race. With Striker unavailable after the incident, I had to get some new people to help out. So I've got Delta here. Hello. And I've got Floris. Hi. So Floris will be flying the gravity drive, which is just the piston door clang drive, but with the gravity drive in it instead. So it's the same weight. Delta will be flying the piston door gravity drive, which hopefully <laughs> will not explode like last time. And I will be flying the hangar door gravity drive, which is the easiest of the bunch to build. So everyone get in their cockpits. In the distance, you will see there is a 10 kilometer marker of a jump gate, which appeared in my previous gravity drive video. And the first person to pass the gate wins. So are you two ready? Yes. Yes. Right. Three, two, one, go. So Delta is clearly in the lead, followed by Floris lagging behind. And now my driver's engaged. Hi, Florius. <laughs> and by Delta. Wow. Okay. See ya. I think we've determined which one is the fastest. The question is, can I actually get on target? <laughs> no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and now we're going to do a second test from the surface of the moon. Normally, the gravity drive wouldn't function on the moon, but I've given it a little bit of a, you know, helping hand, shall we say. So press P once you say go, right? I mean, you can press P. I'd probably recommend pressing the button on your hot bar. <laughs> don't press B. I made a video about this floor, please. <laughs> yeah, don't press B, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> right. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm past the platform. I don't think I even, I don't think I even got off the surface. <laughs> oh. No, I did. <laughs> Floris. <laughs> I don't even know where you've gone. I reached the platform after one second, and now I'm really <laughs> past the platform. <laughs> hey, I see the jump gate. I'm past the second jump gate. I actually caught up <laughs> to you then. Okay, so you're not actually that fast. So obviously, in different circumstances, the different drives can be more useful. However, both variants of the Clang drive I showed are faster than the gravity drive. Additionally, the gravity drive is much more expensive than most Clang drives in terms of needing gravity components, which are very resource intensive, and that gravity generators require more power than, you know, opening a door. There's many more variants of the Clang drive other than the ones shown in this video, so if you want to see more, please let me know. Also, let me know how you'll be using the Clang drive in your future ship builds. And as always, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content. Day number three since I launched from the moon. It has become very long. Are you like the new striker? <laughs> <laughs> At first it was striker, then it was Florius. I've never seen, I've never been seen in another video again. <laughs> <laughs>